Have you guys ever thought or said the words like, I wish I was fast like so-and-so, or it must be nice to be such a gifted runner. I have to work really hard at it. I know this was definitely me when I was coming back into my running journey, post having kids and taking running a lot more seriously again. Once I realized like qualifying for Boston was a thing, I didn't even really know about it beforehand. And I'm like, wow, it must be nice to, you know, be that fast that you can qualify for this prestigious race. I'll never be able to be that fast. Like I'm not that talented. And that was just a really self-limiting belief that I had. And those are the kind of conversations that make us super stuck as runners. That's also a perfect example of how our perceptions are oftentimes based on that perfect finish line photo or what's actually visible to us. when We don't actually see all of the work that it took to get there. We just don't take all of that into account when if you dig a little deeper, it might be something as simple as you're finding out that those runners are running 100 miles plus per week and maybe you're only running like 40 or 50. That's a huge difference. So that right there would give you that aha moment of, oh, okay, it's not that they're just super talented, like they're actually doing a lot more than I'm doing. So that would be an example of a physical training necessary. And there's also a lot of physiological components that are being adapted over time that we don't see or nece necessarily realize either. But beyond that, there are certain mental and personality characteristics that these really successful runners have that they've honed over time and develop their craft to get better so that they can have the success that we are seeing once they kind of get to that pinnacle, right? Now I'm going to be talking about what these traits are, but I want to make sure that we're not confusing success with speed. So I'm not saying that to have success, you necessarily have to be the fastest. This is your personal journey and what you define success to be for you, which really is just making progress, right? If you are making progress and improving and getting better, then that means that you are seeing and having success. So let's get started with number one, which is self-discipline. So self-discipline comes down to being able to do what you know is going to get you to driving you towards the particular running goal that you have. So those systems or processes that you know are required to achieve that goal, you are disciplined in getting those done. So the most successful runners are self-disciplined in the fact that if there's a run on their schedule, they get it done no matter what, they don't make excuses. So ultimately there's where there's a will, there's a way and they will figure it out. Along the same lines of self-discipline, which is kind of like that self-control thing, is that these people are also willing to say no to the things that they know are not serving them in helping them reach their goals. So perhaps drinking or staying out late would just be two that come to mind that maybe it sounds fun in the moment, but they know it's not actually helping them reach their potential and that the running is really important to them and more important to them. And so they are willing to say no to those things. That doesn't mean you can't have a good time with your friends, but you have to decide what's most important to you. Number two is resilience. So in order to have success in your running, you have to be able to take the bad with the good. The ups and the downs, they are all part of the process. And as much as you're celebrating the wins and the things that are going right, you have to be able to mentally get through the hard parts as well, because it's, it's all gonna come. You will never continue to set personal records all the time. It will never be a situation where you're always getting better. That is not how progress looks. Um, it's not a straight line. There's gonna be a lot of ebbs and flows and you have to be able to roll with the punches. So that means if you have a bad race, not dwelling in it, it's okay to say, man, I had a bad race, this sucks, what can I do better next time? And figure that out and then move on, get past it. So the people that are going to see the most success are able to be resilient and let go of the negative and focus on the positive and the wins and what's gonna actually drive them to get better. Number three is a big one that I see a lot of runners struggle with as a coach and that is patience. Good runners understand that adaptations take time and they're not just pushing, pushing all the time to get the next best thing. 
And if you are someone who's very hyper-focused on qualifying for Boston, but you're really not close to that goal right now, then that needs to be a situation where it is a longer term goal. And that's okay because if you are not close and you're trying to get that in the next cycle or even within the year, chances are you're going to end up hurting yourself because you are pushing yourself too fast too soon and your body just doesn't work like that. It's, it's not ready to go and do that much yet. That doesn't mean that you won't get there. You absolutely can if you are willing to be patient and understanding that all great things take time. All right, this next one I really love and that is humility. So the other day I was listening to the Magnus and Marcus on coaching podcast about running that I really, really love. And John Marcus, I think that's his name, he said, humility is the foundation of learning. And that just really stuck with me because it's absolutely true in the fact that if we are not humble and showing humility, we are not allowing ourselves to learn from others and accept that there are other people who know more than we do. So in order to become a better athlete, a better coach, a better person, we have to be able to say, I don't know it all and I'm willing to learn and grow and improve. And that's what you have to do if you wanna have success as a runner. You have to let these concepts in that maybe you don't believe or you've heard something different. And that doesn't mean that you need to believe it straight out, but it's something that you wanna dig further on and that you are willing to take feedback. So if you have a coach, or you know, there's someone else in your life who's a really good runner that you're allowing them to give you feedback and you're actually taking it and not getting defensive about it. Because if you are open to feedback, you are allowing yourself to improve and let go of your ego and say, I know that I have room for improvement and by allowing this new information in, I know that I'm going to get better. So kind of along that same lines is curiosity. So when you are humble and willing to learn and know that there's so much more information out there, it keeps you curious to keep researching and keep seeking out new information that's only going to help serve you. And additionally, it helps you be curious about what else might be out there that you haven't tried before, uh, whether that's a new race distance or trail running versus road running, even though that's something that you thought you would never do before. It's being open to the fact that your body can do more than you ever thought that it could do. The curious runner is willing to try something new and learn, which is always a good thing. Okay, number six is flexibility. So I would say the runners that I'm used to talking to and working with, this is probably something that we need to work on the most because we are often driven type A, very rigid in our routines and our expectations. And the problem is, is that when that's the case, it's really hard to go with the flow when things don't go your way. And the truth is that life happens and you have to be able to pivot on a dime sometimes. So a perfect example is that your kiddo is homesick from school and it'd be easy to just say, I can't get my run in. Like this just messed up my entire schedule. There's, there's no way I can do this. When it's kind of like, okay, let's reframe our mindset. And is there anything else that you can do to ensure you can get this run in? And if not, is there anything else within your fingertips that you can actually do that would be a good substitute? And that's just a very simplistic level, an example of flexibility. But it's also being flexible over time and with your particular methods of reaching a particular goal that you have. So if you guys have ever heard the quote that's be stubborn about your goals, but flexible about your methods, it just means that you know, don't lose sight of that particular goal. So if it is qualifying for Boston, and then initially you think this is the way, it's kind of going back to those ones I said before about having humility and having curiosity is perhaps maybe the first way you tried was not the best way. And what do you need to alter or adapt or change to put you on that particular path of actually getting that goal? Or maybe it's just the timeline. Maybe the timeline needs to change and being flexible about that and just saying to yourself, you know what, initially I thought that I could do it on this particular cycle, but now I'm noticing that you know, it's maybe a little bit too soon and I'm not gonna let that goal, goal go, but what do I need to change here? I'm willing to be flexible because it's important to me. 
All right, number seven is another one I love. And honestly, this is just a word I love about life in general, and that is perspective. So I think that it's really important that we remind ourselves that we are not elite athletes. We are not getting paid to run, that this is something that we enjoy doing that is fulfilling for ourselves and helps us be better people. And it's not the time on the clock that's allowing us to be those better people that we want to become. It's actually the process of reaching our potential and doing our best. And so I think we really lose sight a lot of times on everything we achieved along the way if we didn't get the time that we wanted. And I know this is something that for me, I really need to work on. And so that's gonna be my one this year is just having more perspective. I think I worked on it last year and having a couple races that didn't go the way that I, I thought that they should that I needed to remind myself, you know, what is truly important in life. So I like to go back to this quote from Brene Brown, where she talks about, you know, in any type of situation that happens to you, asking yourself, is this gonna matter in five seconds? Is it gonna matter in five minutes, five weeks, five months, five years? And that just really helps you reframe the particular situation and determine how important it really is. So if it's not gonna matter in five minutes, then obviously it's not important at all. Chances are it's more than that. But then you go up to, you know, is it gonna really matter in five months or five years? Very likely not. And you're gonna have another opportunity in that time to show what you can do. And there's gonna be a lot of things that in life are really, really exciting and difficult and that are gonna matter a lot more. So no, I'm not saying that you shouldn't work extremely hard at reaching your running goals. I absolutely do. So if anyone gets it, I do, I promise. But I think we could all use a little bit more perspective in not just our running, but in life. And the last one is balancing, this is kind of two, balancing prudence with risk taking. So prudence being making the smart decision, making the smart choice versus you got to be able to be brave and take a risk too to reach these really high running goals that you have for yourself. So it definitely is a fine line oftentimes and trying to determine in the situation what's better. Is it better for me to be smart and hold back and be conservative here? Or is this an opportunity to take a risk and maybe it's going to blow up in my face? You know, maybe I'm gonna end up hitting a wall big time in a race, but at least I'll know I tried. It's also being more prudent in a situation where you might get injured versus taking a risk and training when you know that you shouldn't if it's going to risk an injury or something like that. So I encourage you guys definitely this year to think about that one along with the others. So I would love to know which one of these you think that you could work on the most. Remember that growth happens in baby steps. So if you feel like you're missing the mark on several of these, you don't need to do everything at once. What's one that you think that you could really work on in the next six months, year? Because any progress that you make in any of these areas are going to help you improve as a runner. And going back to the very beginning of what I said, if we're always looking at other people and saying things like, I wish I was fast like so-and-so, or I'm such a slow runner, those are self-limiting beliefs and they will never ever serve you. So if that's you and that's something you can work on, I would definitely encourage you to do so, knowing that this is your journey and you're amazing with whatever point you are at in your running. Thanks for joining me today, guys. This is a fun one to talk about. I always love to talk about the inner strength, the mental strength that it takes to get through some of our big running goals because it's a very big deal and I just appreciate you guys being here with me today.